Hey guys, Matt Lake here, back with another Unreal 5 tutorial covering cloth. This is the second uh, in series, so if you haven't seen the first part, go watch that. We're going to pick up exactly where we left off, uh, where we made a simple cape, as shown here on our Lyra demo character. Today's video, we're going to cover how to make a simplified simulation mesh, which we can use to wrap a higher poly model to. This is a bit of an optimization as you do not need to simulate the same amount of vertices that are in the render mesh. Uh, one example of this is if your mesh has thickness to it, you do not necessarily need to simulate the vertices on either side of the thickness. You can just simulate one side and copy it to both. Um, it's a very similar principle to uh, skin wrap where if when skinning you make a one-sided poly, you skin that and you just copy and transfer the weights over there. It's a very similar process. Um, so to do this, we're going to have to move over and start in Maya back on our character. So let's start over there. So here we have our character. And as you know, we have a very simple cube here, which is our cape. And it does have thickness on it, um, which we do not necessarily need to simulate. So in Unreal, when we open up our cloth sim here, we're actually painting weights on both sides here, which is an unnecessary calculation. It's doubling the, the expense. We don't need that. We only need one side. So what we can do is we can make a duplicate of this mesh, which we can then feed into the cloth system to basically simulate that instead. So let's start off by just duplicating this mesh. And we'll just isolate that by itself. And we're only going to need one side. So let's delete all the polys except the one side that we need. And let's do a delete history on that as we need a clean model. And let's skin that back up to the skeleton. And we're going to need to copy the exact same weights from the original cape onto this one. Let's do a copy skin weights. And then we should have two meshes which are exactly matching. Perfect. Okay, so. Similar to how we dealt with the material slots in the first video where cloth requires its own material slot as it assigns cloth to all of that material slot, we need a similar thing for doing a simplified simulation mesh. We basically need to have a difference between our render mesh and our simulation mesh. Because our simulation mesh, although it's fed into Unreal, we will be disabling its renderability so it'll be an invisible material slot, whereas we want the render mesh to actually still render. So we're going to need two materials to, to do this. So let's start off by moving over to our material editor. And we already have a material for our cape. Let's duplicate this. Edit duplicate shading network. And let's give this a new name. So we're going to call this cape simulation. And we'll rename the original cape to cape underscore render. And we'll do the same on the geometry. Let's assign the material to the material simulation mesh. And let's save that and export. So now that we're back in engine, let's re-import our base mesh onto this character. Now it's found our two new material slots. So we've got Cape Render and Cape Simulation. Let's hit reset to FBX. And we'll see we now have a new material slot over here. And now you'll see if we pan the character around, we've got a one-sided material here, which is exactly what we're after. Okay, let's start off by clearing out the old cloth because we don't need that anymore. Okay, so we're basically starting like a fresh character. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the cloth, but this time, instead of using it from the render mesh, we're gonna do it from the simulation element that we've just made. So let's isolate the element. Let's click it and right click again. And now we can go to create clothing data from section. So it's very similar to what we did before, but this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the remove from mesh checkbox. And what that'll do is actually make it disappear from rendering. So it's made some new cloth profiles and it's made the actual element disappear. You can't actually get back to it through the regular material slots and a lot of people kind of get confused at this point. But what you can do is if you go into the LOD sections and scroll down, where you've got this material slot and you can see it's disabled, there's a hidden right click option here to re-enable it. So if you right click in this background, there's an option to enable or disable rendering. So you can, if you want to bring it back, 
or if you made a mistake and you want to reset it, click enable and you can actually bring the mesh back into rendering or you can just right click and disable and freely do it that way. It's a really good tip. Sometimes if you're ever dealing with material slots and you've got this pipeline, if material slots move the indice order, you can end up with a disabled on the wrong slot. So that's how you re-enable it. So you just right click, click enable, okay? So now we have a new cloth data. So if we go back over to our clothing window, again, if we reopen it, you'll find some, some new clothing data in there. Um, and if we just activate cloth pen, you'll see we've got this mesh here and it's only one sided, which is brilliant. So let's just quickly paint pretty much what we had before where we did half the cape and we did a smooth. And if we just close that down, so now with our newly created cloth data, we can actually apply that to a different material slot um, and we can apply it directly to our, uh, our mesh with thickness. We'll get the exact same result as before, but it'll be way more optimized and you've got more control over it because you don't have to worry about that thickness, which can become quite tiresome, especially if you're painting and um, trying to match the exact value on two paints on either side of the model can be quite, can be quite convoluted. So this is an excellent pipeline. But that's another thing to note that the cloth data doesn't have to correspond with the exact material slot it was made from. So you can make it from slot one and apply it to slot four. But yeah, so now we've got that one side of cloth, like I said, it's gonna be a lot more optimized, but the optimizations don't just stop there. Because as you noticed, when we made this simulation mesh in here, although we've lost the thickness and lost a ton of vertices, um, we, we are still quite high poly on here which again is un totally unnecessary. We don't have to match the exact same render mesh. So what we can do to make this even more optimized, reduce this mesh even further. So I, I could quickly use something like the reduce tool to bring down the percentage of, uh, bring down the percentage of polygons. Like you could even put that in as a simulation mesh if you wanted to. And just to demonstrate, um, this would actually work perfectly inside of the editor. Um, so let's just quickly skin this back up. Export this through. And let's re-import that mesh. And I'm just gonna show you another feature. So although we've updated the simulation mesh, the data that's inside the uh, cloth paint hasn't updated. To update that information, if we head back to the asset details tab and re-enable the material slot, if we highlight it, if we right click and move to the create clothing LOD from section, uh, this option is for creating LODs, which I'll cover in a future video. But what we can do is we can actually update existing data through this uh, interface. So what we can do is hit remap parameters, which will copy the paint weights from the data that exists already onto the existing one. And then we can pick the clothing that we want to replace. And we're gonna replace LOD zero because we don't have any other LODs. And again, we're gonna remove from mesh. Uh, so it's another tool to update the cloth data if you ever change the simulation mesh. I've got update. We might need to open up the paint tool and then close the paint tool down again and it should reapply the data nicely. And there you go. So we've updated it and it, it does work, uh, but obviously, as you notice, we've only got four vertices here that are actually simulating. So we get a little bit more like a, a hinge effect. So let's, let's give it a play. Let's have a little bit of a run around. So that's a very, very extreme example of how low that the simulation meshes can go to actually copy to the high poly meshes. So let, let's find a middle ground between the two. Let's open up some quick modeling tools and let's just do a connect. Oh, let's do a connect that way. And let's just put like 20 that way. Reapply our skinning. And let's export it all out. And again, let's do the same process. So we'll do a re-import, which won't update the cloth there. Let's go back to here, re-enable that section. Click the section, create clo uh, clothing LOD from section, remap parameters, set the cloth, 
replace lot zero, remove from mesh, create. And if we open up the cloth tool, and there we go, we've got our our updated mesh. And let's just do some just quick painting on the top here. And there we go, we've got a much higher quality render mesh being driven by a much, much simpler simulation mesh. If we give it a play, and there we go. So there's one thing I think that's demonstrating already is the amount of simulated vertices in a mesh vastly differs the actual physical properties of the mesh. Like you already saw um, earlier in the video when we had tons and tons of vertices that were being simulating, the cloth was very, very different. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind and I'll cover in a future video when I go over the cloth. Less or more vertices make the cloth actually behave differently. So a set of properties that might work really well for one character in a certain density of topology may not work so well on another character. But yeah, so that's how you use a simplified simulation mesh and copy it to a render mesh for optimization purposes and maybe even for actual simulation changes. But yeah, guys, I uh, hope you learned something. I've got a few more videos on cloth coming up. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. If you've got any questions, comment below or reach out to me on Twitter at MattLakeTA. Have a great day, guys. Bye.